didn't you know, didn't you know, trying to lose but I lost my way, didn't you know, didn't you know, riding on my emotions way. <laughs> Hi Kingdom, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Deshaun King. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss out on any videos the second that they drop. How we like that new little baby? I like it. I listened to the whole thing in the shower this morning. Honestly, it's really no skip. So in today's video, I'm gonna be bleaching my hair a little bit, doing a second round bleach, because I usually have my hair platinum blonde. Right now, it's a bit kind of like a ash yellow like there's some yellow undertones that you can't really tell on camera but in person you can definitely tell so I'm gonna do just a little bit of some bleaching to get that platinum and then we're also gonna be doing a skincare routine as well this is gonna be kind of like a chit chat video so feel free to get a snack and we're just gonna be talking about some questions that you guys sent me over on Instagram some topics and honestly like whatever comes to mind just a chill talk to y'all y'all talk to me in the comments type of video so. by the way I finally mastered the whole daytime lighting thing with my filming setup, or at least I think I have. This is like the bestest look to me. I'm gonna be bleaching my hair first. I have literally like only enough for like one more round. Like this is all I have. And I'm using the BW2 bleach from Clairol. And then I have the volume 40 from Clairol as well. I'm also gonna be using um, a little bit of this Carol's Daughter Mimosa Hair Honey around my edges. Instead of using Vaseline, I'll use this because it's like a legit conditioner. I don't have to use much because I'm not gonna be like bleaching my front part because my front part around my edges is already platinum, but it's like the top and like the sides are still kind of have that yellow undertone. I have gloves this time, you guys. I have gloves. I'm like a legit cosmetologist now. Not really, I'm not licensed. My mama is, but I'm not. The other day I posted on my story, introduce yourself as your middle name. It was like that ad photo kind of thing that was going on in Instagram stories. So I posted on my story, it was like a little video of me and it was my middle name, Rodriguez, which a lot of you guys were very surprised that my middle name is Rodriguez and it is. Now in my Spanish, as far as I know, no. So no sé, no. No, lo siento. I am part Italian though, so fun fact. I am part Italian. Um, I'm not sure if I've talked about like my whole racial background. First of all, I'm black, okay? I'm black all day long. I was black yesterday. I'm gonna be black tomorrow. I was black two years ago. I'm gonna be black. But there is a bit of some history, um, at least on my mother's side. On my dad's side, there's like some Cherokee going on. But I do know on my mom's side, my grandfather's father is full Italian man. We have never met him. We do not know who he is. There's a story that goes with that. My great grandfather is an Italian man. He may or may not still be alive. We don't know. That's like, what, 12%? Because 50% is like if my parent, if I had one parent that was white, 25% is if my grandparents was white yeah that makes sense so like half of 25 is about like 12.5 yeah 12.5 percent white so who cares like it, that's nothing usually i don't have to pour as much especially when my hair is low so i'll do like you know maybe like one my middle name comes from my uncle who has passed away um, he passed away when my mom was pregnant with me so i never got to meet him he looks just like my mom too and a lot of people said when i was when i was born that i looked just like him my middle name came from him and my first name came from my other uncle on my dad's side my dad's brother so I was pretty much named after both of my uncles at the time. But yeah, I'm not Spanish. So many people were swiping up on my story like, mm, Spanish papi. Uh, 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 no, no te quiere más. No te quiere más. I don't even know what I'm saying. So I was a little bummed out because I was supposed to see the City Girls last Friday, but my friend Janae, she was the one that had the extra ticket and was gonna let me go with her. She got the flu, so we didn't end up going. So that that sucked. I've been vlogging this week and um, I was like, oh shoot, that would've been great content. But there's always next time because Miami is like only about three hours, three and a half hours away from Orlando. So it's not that far. Like we can always take like a, a little weekend getaway or whatever. So I'm gonna be working 
working on some video ideas for the next couple months after I'm done filming and editing this video that I'm making right now. I just have like this newfound motivation to make sure I finish the rest of the year on a high note. So I'm really excited about that. I wanna work on getting a thousand followers on TikTok. I don't know why I haven't hit that. I mean, I do know why I haven't hit that yet because I don't be posting on there like that. Like I post, but TikTok, you're supposed to be feeding that app like daily, like it's a child. You cannot go a day without feeding TikTok. I need to work on at least having something to post pretty much every day, even though that sounds crazy, right? That sounds excessive, but people can get it done. TikTok, honestly, like anything flies and you don't necessarily need like the best quality to do well on that app. I'm debating on whether or not I wanna incubate this because my color's already lifted, so I don't necessarily need to incubate this. Oh, I also have more exciting news. So speaking of one of the videos that I'm planning, I have a special guest for Gay Chat episode six. So you guys be on the lookout for that. It is another influencer and I did do a little hint on my story. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you need to because I be dropping a lot of gems on there. So if you wanna stay in the loop with everything that's going on, things I'm gonna be posting on YouTube and also my day-to-day -day life, just follow me on Instagram. Speaking of, I need to get like my questions and topics together for her because we're supposed to be planning this on Wednesday, like Wednesday evening to film it so that I can post it next Friday, hopefully. Y'all, I look so crazy, but I've decided I'm not gonna incubate this because it's already feeling <laughs> Okay, so while this settles in a little bit, like I said, I do look a little crazy because I didn't do like my front edges because my front edges are already platinum. I just look a little weird right now, but we're getting there. And you know, didn't you know? Try to lose, but I lost my way. Didn't you know? Didn't you know? Why do you my emotions away? It's giving Erica Badu. It's giving Theodora from The Watcher. It's giving very much that, right? So I just washed my hair and it's drying underneath this towel. Take it off. Take it off. Woo! You guys have seen this countless different times. I have adjusted my hair routine just a little bit. I'm gonna use this rice water leave-in conditioner from Mayo. Only need like a little bit of this. Oh, and the next one I'm gonna use is this Fanola Nourishing Restructuring Serum. They sent this to me in PR. One of the best things to have in my hair care routine because it's a serum that helps strengthen your hair, especially colored hair. So you only need like, like a pump. Sometimes I'll use like a pump and a half because it's a very thick consistency, so you don't need much. It's kind of like an oil, but it's not. So someone asked, opinion on popular aesthetics, are they oversaturated? I actually really like that topic. Clean girl aesthetic the soft life and all this stuff. I'm using the Carol's Daughter Almond Milk Leave-In Conditioning Spray. This is sort of like a topical treatment that I use. They're pretty much all the same exact aesthetic, give or take a couple routines, right? I mean, I would say soft life is a very female dominated aesthetic, but the clean girl aesthetic is also an aesthetic I see with guys too. There's like a couple fashion influencers and lifestyle influencers that I follow that are also men and the whole clean aesthetic like bright nudes neutral plain your hair pulled back or keeping your hair short gelled down and just clean speaking in a monotone like this in your videos and your TikToks. this is a day in the life of a content creator living in new york i start my day with hot tea and i start my day with da 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 da, -da. the same thing can be said of like a soft life influencer right they, they pretty much do the same things soft day in the life of an atlanta Atlanta content creator, 25 years old. I start my day walking my dog, and then we go to bucket shops, and then blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. I think it becomes a problem when you try to center your content around the aesthetic, right? Instead of just putting out your content and, hey, my content just happens to fit this aesthetic. I'm not gonna lie, a couple of my visual diaries, they can be said that they fit like the whole soft life aesthetic, right? They're very poetic and they're very very serious and thought provoking, but I don't try to make it like that, if that makes sense. Like that's just how I am. I'm using some gel to like lay this down too. It's good to do this while your hair is like either wet or damp. Someone else asked, what are your goals for 2023? For the most part, it's honestly just advancing 
in life overall. Just having like a more balanced and organized lifestyle, making sure my time management is where it should be because I don't feel like I manage my time in the best way. I'm such a Virgo, it's really hard for me to organize my thoughts. It's like an organized mess. It just happens to be that way. I want to be settled in properly into my new place. Like there's still quite a few things that I'm missing. I still haven't found a couch. Couches are very tricky because one, they can take forever to come. I need to get my TV mounted. I need to find a rug. There's just a whole bunch of little things that I need. I need a knife set too. I need to probably write this all down in my digital planner, to be honest. I've been desperately looking for a good knife set. Okay, so we're gonna be going in with something new today. We're gonna be using the Rose Water Daily Cleansing Gel from Good Molecules. So this is something that I bought myself. I did not get this sent to me. It looks like someone asked me for a makeup tutorial. Mm -mm. I'm so sorry. No ma'am. No thank you. I do not do makeup tutorials. Now granted, right? Because I don't I don't really wear makeup. And if I do wear something, it's very, very, very very minimal it's not tutorial worthy the only thing that i'll do if i wear makeup is like a little bit of like some brow pencil from benefit the brow gel from benefit too and then i'll use like the fenty under eye concealer that came out in the little tube and that's it that's literally it i don't do anything else if i'm going out at night and I know there's gonna be videos and pictures that me and my friends are gonna be doing. I'll put on some powder so that I don't look shiny. I don't do like bronzer, I don't do foundation, I don't do primer, I don't do blush, lipstick, lip gloss, all that stuff, I don't do that. It's never been my thing, never will be my thing. Oh, I have a pimple coming, dear Lord. Yeah, that's gonna get zapped away probably use some high frequency on that. Next question, best advice for new YouTuber slash influencers? Uh, I guess for me, what helps me is, like I said earlier, always doing research. Like I'm always studying what the big influencers are doing, what people are doing differently that's helping them grow so that I can learn from it and possibly implement that for myself. It's impossible to do everything that everyone else is doing. You don't have to either because there's just different ways to grow. Some people grow by posting every day. Naturally Sunny, she is doing the whole Vlogtober thing and she's posting every single day that helps her grow. Whereas me, you know, the whole posting every day thing. One, I don't know what I could possibly post every single day on this channel. I have no clue what I could possibly do. That's why Vlogmas last year did not work for me. When I was posting every single day for that first week, I was losing subscribers. I lost a lot of subscribers. It was actually quite scary. And I was talking over with some of my friends and I'm like, yo, like, is this what's tea with Vlogmas? And everyone else was like, yeah, this is why I don't do Vlogmas. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop. Immediately when I stopped Vlogmas last year, I gained all those subscribers that I lost back and then some in a span of three days. It was like the weirdest spike in my analytics I've ever had. And you know, that's just me. Some people, Vlogmas works for them. Posting every single day works for them. Vlogtober and Vlogmas, like those things work for certain creators. For me, it just didn't work out. I don't know, maybe I was just posting at weird times every day, I don't know. You know, that's, it's a challenge. Posting every day is a challenge when you are, I guess like a lifestyle influencer because there's just certain things that you post. Vlogmas works for entertainment channels, like people that do like pranks and people that, like vlogging is all they do on their channel because they are a vlog channel. So Vlogmas works for them. I do more than just vlogs on my channel, I do like, sit down videos like this. I guess my advice is find what works for you and don't be afraid when certain things don't work because we're not meant to be successful at every single thing that we try, right? Sometimes it's okay to fail. Failure just means, okay, this didn't work, but you get to learn from that. And I think that's something that I've been trying to come to grips with too because for so long I've been afraid of, oh, I don't wanna fail. But even if I do fail, I learn what I did wrong and then what I can do differently. It's like instead of trying to avoid failure, it's like kind of welcome failure, if that makes sense. It's like reverse psychology. But yes, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wash this cleanser off and then we can move on to our next steps. Okay, so now that that cleanser's off, I'm gonna go in with some toner and I'm gonna be using 
where is it? I'm gonna be using the Niacinamide Brightening Toner from Good Molecules 2, one of my favorites. This is like my third bottle. <laughs> I just bought this bottle too. So I wanted to talk about something personal. You know, we can throw in something personal in here. Lately, I've been feeling a little lonely. I've just been feeling lonely, like I don't really have that many friends that I can link up with in real life. Other than Janae, that's pretty much my only person that I hang out with. She doesn't even live in Orlando. She doesn't live far, but she doesn't live here. And so, and this is why I retract my previous statements, like I want no new friends, I want no new friends, but I don't, but hear me out, listen, listen. I don't want new friends, but I do have room for, I would say maybe like one more friend, preferably a male, and I'll tell you why. I have enough female friends. I have enough beautiful, confident, well-rounded women around me already, in person and virtually. I don't need any more. Being friends with women, it comes with a lot of emotional investment, especially because like me and other women, we kind of like have the same mindset when it comes to how we carry ourselves in life. At the end of the day, I'm still a man too. So I'm lacking that that balance. Like I need male friends and it's really hard finding male friends, especially straight ones, without them thinking that I want them because I definitely don't. Like it's, it's not that serious. I don't know, it's just very hard. Like Orlando is very lonely. I think it's because it's such a diverse area. Like it's not predominantly black. It's not predominantly, I wouldn't even say it's predominantly white either. There's a lot of Hispanics here, but it's like a melting pot of everybody. It's very mixed in Orlando. So that's why it's kind of hard to find your core group of people because everyone is kind of mixed in with everybody. It's hard to navigate and Orlando is very spread across anyways. Like you got people in Winter Park, you got people in UCF, you got people downtown Orlando, you got people Lake Buena Vista, like where Disney is, people in Kissimmee that are like not really Orlando. I don't consider people in Kissimmee and Orlando, to be honest. They just say they're from Orlando, but Kissimmee is like way out there. Downtown Orlando is really where people link up at. There's not many other places other than Universal Studios when it's Halloween Horror Nights, which I still haven't gone to. I wanna see, maybe me and Janae can go if she's feeling better. I've never been to Halloween Horror Nights before. I've always wanted to go. Yeah, other than like the amusement parks, if you're trying to go out on a chill vibe, maybe get some hookah, there's select places that you can go. Like Orlando is very small. I would say it's kind of like a, a little Miami without as much to do per se. Like it's not as industry and clicky. At least with finding friends, it's just very difficult. With women, I can always make friends with other women. It's very, very, very easy. But making friends with other guys is very difficult. Let's say I don't want a straight male friend. Let's say I want a gay male friend. That also comes with this own stereotypical issues too, unfortunately, because I've had my fair share of issues. It can be very catty sometimes. They try to put you in a competition with them. It's never that. Like I'm not in competition with anybody. I've had problems with other gay friends trying to get with friends or people that I'm associated with online, like going through who I follow, liking their pictures, and then I'm getting word from my actual friends, like, hey, like, who's this on my page? And I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so being thirsty. That's embarrassing. So like being friends with men in general is just very difficult. Like, it doesn't matter which side of the coin, it's just very difficult. And I just wish it wasn't that way. Especially because I'm already very picky when it comes to who I associate myself with because I really analyze a person's character to see, are they a ticking time bomb? Do they have ulterior motives? Like, what, what is this person all about? But yeah, that's kind of where I've been, at least mentally. That's been like my only issue lately. It's just like, mm. now don't get me wrong. I actually love being alone. Like I don't have a problem with being alone, but when I do feel like being around company, that's when it's like, ah, damn, like I don't have nobody to chill with. I guess I'm gonna do this solo. Next, I'm gonna be using this Hyaluronic Acid Serum from Good Molecules too. I know it seems like I'm using all Good Molecules products. I low key am because I've been testing them out. This is the smallest size that I got and it was really cheap too. And this is gonna last me a while because you do not need much 
Like I typically would do one drop on the forehead, one drop on one cheek, next on the other, and then the rest in my hands. And I'll do like an extra one too. See, look at that. Just glass, glass skin. I really like how the light reflects off of my skin when I put this on. The last product that I'm gonna be using, you guys, listen closely. This has by far been my most favorite new skincare product lately. I'm so glad they sent this to me. This is the Strength Trainer Peptide Boost Moisturizer from Ulla Henriksen. You do not need much, but nightly, oh my goodness, this looks so good on my skin. And in the morning, this is one of my favorite nighttime moisturizers I've ever, ever tried. I'm not even putting on eye cream this time because with this moisturizer, I don't really need it. Woo, my goodness gracious. Like my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. It don't get no better than that. A little goes a long way. Pretty much all that I wanted to talk about today. This is a little short, you know, chit chat video, but I wanted to film something, talk to you guys real quick, just to get something out there. Um, I'm gonna have a lot, like I said, after I film this video, I'm gonna be sitting down planning a whole bunch of fun content for you guys. Routine videos, I love doing routine videos. I haven't done one in such a long time. And now that we're getting to the holiday season and seasons are changing, my life is changing, I'm settling into my new place more, I definitely am gonna have have a lot more fun new content for you guys so I'm excited for you to see if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a like subscribe to my channel turn on my post notifications it's so important so you don't miss out on any videos and of course all products that I used in this video is gonna be linked down below in the description so make sure you check that out too in case you want to cop anything try it out for yourself um, I stand by these products when I try them out I don't have any issues I will not recommend anything for you to try if I don't like it with all that being said thank you so much for watching if you want to binge watch any more of my videos click that little playlist above in the corner that says more from Deshaun so you can binge watch all of my videos and yeah thank you so much for watching I'll see you later